Scott Gorham had not seen Philip in over a year. He says he needed the separation so he could get clean and sober. When he finally went to visit his old friend, he was shocked at the state Phil was in. He opens up the door at his house, and I knew right there that he was uh, he was still doing, he was still in a terrible state. And you know, we sat down, we talked about it for a while, and he, he says, you know, I know I'm I, I'm gonna I'm giving this up. You know, I'm going on the big clean deal now, and you know, it's it's gonna work out for me. And you know, it's, don't worry about it. I'm I'm gonna be cutting it out. Phil's mother didn't know he was hooked on heroin, but she could see that something was terribly wrong with her son. I noticed he's started to look bloaty and he was forever getting a pain here and I said to him one day Philip you wouldn't take heavy drugs would you? you wouldn't be on heavy drugs would you I'm mad for God's sake on Christmas Day 1985 Philip was visited by his mother and daughters but he was so sick he could barely get out of bed to greet them when Philip's former roadie Charlie McLennan showed up at the house Philomena learned her son's terrible secret I said he's got a um, stomach bug Charlie said, has nobody told you yet? Charlie told Philomena that her son was a heroin addict and that he was in desperate need of a doctor. I got hold of him. I said, listen, you're going into a clinic. I said, um, I know everything now and I'll get you better. That day, Charlie drove Philip to a private rehabilitation clinic almost two hours away. When Phil finally arrived at the Clouds Clinic, doctors quickly determined his system was failing and he needed to get to a hospital. He was immediately driven to the closest hospital in Salisbury, 30 minutes away, where he was put into intensive care. I went down there and I stayed with him for 11 days. Sat on his bed, talking to him. Philip's condition was grave, but no one feared the worst. I thought that it was highly exaggerated. I didn't realize that it was serious. I thought the papers had bombed it up to sell a few more copies. Yeah, I didn't take it terribly seriously. Philip was always in that trouble. He'd been, he'd been in hospital before, you know? I said, well, uh, maybe I should go over. It's no, no, it's no point. Absolutely no point. He's going to pull through eventually. I said, um, uh, well, should I come down to the hospital? And I said, no, 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 you know, wait. One day in the hospital, Philip shocked his mother by calling a priest to his room. The priest came and he came out. And then I went into Philip and he said to me, he said, merciful Jesus, what have I done to you? He said to me, and I said, I'll get you better. I promise you I'll get you better. But it was around about then that I looked down and I'd seen his feet. And it was his feet that he had been injecting. That's how he deceived us all. Philip was near death. His liver, kidneys and heart were shutting down. On January 4th, 1986, Philip Lynott died of total system failure. Like his mythic Irish hero, Cucullin, he died young. Philip was only 36 years old. I went to the brink of insanity at the loss of him. I used to tell myself that he was off touring. No one was prepared for Phil's passing. Nobody phoned me. I just heard on radio that Phil died. It was just like too unreal to even imagine, you know. I was sitting with my ex-wife in the Bailey pub where we used to hang out with Philip. And this guy lifted up a paper on the headline was Philip Lyon at dead, you know? I was just heartbroken, you know, I just couldn't believe it. I heard my wife uh, give this huge intake of breath, right? And I knew that, that he was dead. And, uh, you know, I, I literally, I just uh, sat on the stairs and started crying. After our affair And in that line, I'd left behind the years, the tears, the memories, and you in Dublin. An intimate memorial ceremony was held in London and another in Phil's hometown of Dublin. Mourners came to honor the rocker, 
the friend, husband, and father. Friends come to say farewell. The father of Irish rock will always be remembered for his enthusiasm, for the loyalty he showed to his friends, and his ability to inspire others to break the system and get through it as he had done himself. How can I leave the town that brings me down, that has no jobs, that's blessed by God, who makes me cry? God bless me. Gather all the men folk Speaking the Celtic tongue like Cuchulain, the legendary Celtic hero he had studied as a young man, Philip Lynott had led a short life. But the memory of his deeds would live on, as in the days of old the hero's songs would be sung down through the years. The land is Friends say that Philip's spirit is still with them. Oh, powerful spirit, yeah, absolutely. Powerful presence, you know. And there's, I mean, a lot of very strange unexpected, un inexplicable things happened. I certainly felt his presence at least three times distinctly in the two or three years after he died. I mean, it was absolutely unmistakable. I had no doubt he was there. You know? Now, it's awful when you hear people say, I can't believe he's dead. He is dead. I know he's dead. I'm not stupid, you know? I'm also not superstitious, you know? But to his undoubtedly a feeling that his presence was manifesting itself. This is a song while I'm away to say all the things I'd love to say. Phil's mother often hears stories from friends and fans of otherworldly encounters with her son. Now, two people, you get one telling the story of Philip appearing to them in a house. And then the wife sat and said, she had the same experience at the same time and he said to her i want you to tell my mother that i am at peace okay i'm going to read uh, philomena this song was written for his mother i've been a wild rover sailed all over the sea but this thing that makes me wander has made a fool of me for it took me from my childhood underneath the stars and the skies and I still hear the wind whispering through the wildwood whispering goodbye. It's homeboy's home. She's homeboy's home no matter where I roam. If you see my mother, please give her all of my love. For she is a heart of gold there as good as God above. If you see my mother, tell her I'm keeping fine. Tell her that I love her and I'll try and write some time. That's pretty much Philip, you know. Philip Lynott and his mother spent much of their lives apart. Now Philomena visits her son's gravesite every day, taking care of the many flowers and gifts regularly left by his devoted fans. Years after his death, Philomena says she understands her son better now. There's a video where you see Philip walking over a bridge in Dublin, and he stops, and he just leans his head on the railings, and he sings, this boy is cracking up, this boy is breaking down. And every time I hear it, he was saying something, but nobody listened. This boy is cracking up. This boy has broke down. Philomena remains haunted by her son's music and her memories. It was his phone call. Ah, this happened, that happened. And he never, ever put the phone down without saying, I love you. And those words remain in my heart. And I loved him too, and I'm sorry, that, that's the story of my Philip. He was a great man. The sadness, it never ceases. Oh, I'm still in love with you. I'm gonna make
Ich schütze zum Be-